So I was checking my email one day, I was getting a little bored. And I took a break and I went into a Jewish chat in MSN. And I'm in there with all the Jews. And it was actually an Israeli chat it was called, quote unquote. Guy comes in, he says, male 23, United Arab Emirates Muslim, who wants to chat? So all the Yahoo, they started making fun of him, saying all kinds of horrible things to him. And he was answering them back, but his, his criticisms of quote unquote Israel were very precise. So I was interested because I'm as Nabi, you know, I came to this land from the West and I see that all these conclusions that he's coming to had some weight to them. So I whispered him in a private chat. And this led to about two years of him teaching me and quizzing me, mostly about Tawheed al Elohiyya. It seemed strange to me as I spoke to this guy. This guy is a goy, he's a Gentile. But wallahi, he, he, knew, he knew where God was, where God wasn't. He knew Allah better than any Jew that I ever met. If you ask the Jews, where's Allah? They tell you everywhere. They have no idea. In Kul Makan. I finally saw a man that wasn't Jewish, but this guy is better than me and better than all that I knew. One day, I mean, I really liked this guy. He had a big impression on me. And he told me one day, you said, do me a favor, send me, send me your picture in an email. And I said, well, what do you want my picture for? He said, because when I come to Philistine, I want to know whose head I'm not going to chop off. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just signed off. <laughs> SubhanAllah. So I started to think about this. Wow, man. This was way before the current trend of head chopping. So I started to think about it. Wow, that, that was really killer. And it had an impact on me. Now Islam was strongly in my mind and at this point all the problems that the brother was giving me about Judaism that I started to learn and by the way to understand Judaism in full is very hard because Judaism is based not just on the simple level and the Quran says it's simple for all to understand Judaism has, or I should call it Rabbiism it has the, under, the simple understanding, the middle understanding, and the hidden understanding. But only the, the Hachamat, or should I call them the elders of Zion, understand. And they always leave this back door open, so you can never really debate them. Because each one has a different opinion on everything that you mentioned to them. So, I discussed about the corrupted uh, Torah of today and the evil Talmud. And I spoke to this rabbi, he used to ride, I used to live near Gaza in the boat. I used to drive to El Khuz every day after to work. There was some rabbi with me, he was, he was a crazy American guy, but he had the alam in the, of the deen of the Yehud. Everything that I told him, he said, yes, that's correct. Everything correct, 100%. So I said, listen, rabbi, you, you're telling me all this? Said, yeah, this is correct. I said, so I want you to do me a favor, I want you to meet his brother in Emirates. I want you to talk to him. He said, I will not. I said, well, why not? He said, if you, he said, everything you said is correct, but if you think that I'm going to tell a boy that Judaism is incorrect, I won't do it. So, uh, subhanAllah, this is, what, uh, this is what the Quran tells us, this is what we learn from the Sunnah, and this is what they are today. This was a man of, of their knowledge. Anyway, another incident, one day I was in Jerusalem, and I saw the rabbi, and this rabbi, I always wanted to speak to him. Even when I was in Brooklyn, he used to live near my community. His name was Rabbi Suleimani, and he was the rabbi of the Shirazi Jews from Faras, from Iran. And he was new to America. And now I, I see the Iranian Jews that are in quote unquote Israel. So I asked him, uh, I went over to him and said, Rabbi, can I ask you a question? He said, yes. Yeah. He said, where is it better for a Jew to be a religious Jew, an Orthodox Jew? In a land of Sharia, at that time that's what I believed that that land was that he was in, where the women, they're dressed in uh, hijab, properly covered, you don't hear uh, Al-Shaf words, you don't hear the dirty words coming out of their mouth on the street like you see, and you know, in, in, in Tel Aviv, in these places where the Iranians live, they have dresses, it's not size 1, 2, 3, it's size, the size they wear is not guilty or honor. Really, really short. Is it better that they see this, or is it better that they be surrounded by these people? And he told me, not by force. I said, Rabbi, I said, uh, do you believe that the Torah is the Haq? Do you believe the Talmud is the Haq? Do you believe Judaism is the Haq? He said, yes. He said, you're going to tell me that if you had the Kuwa, if you had the power to enforce that deen that you believe is the truth, you wouldn't do it? And he told me, shh. 
خلاص. This man is a belly. I don't want to see this guy. Now I see exactly for sure what they are. These are garbage people. They don't they don't even stand up for what they believe their their religion is. The next morning I went to the Sukh al Arabi in Al Quds and I bought the translation of the meaning of the Holy Quran in English. And I remember when I was taking it home, it was like I was taking home contraband, like I had something stolen. Because the Yehud, they say you're not allowed to read, especially the Rambam, he's one of the big uh, hafamats. That you're, you're forbidden to read any foreign uh, ideologies or fake. When I got home, I locked myself on the sun porch. And this is, you know, Yom is the day after the Yehud. 